Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Post and Pints. This is episode 35. Now the numbers are starting to get ridiculous. This would be the Kevin Durant episode if you watch basketball, and I doubt any of you watch basketball. I think I'm the only one here who watches basketball, but that's a separate topic. Alex, Kyle, and Dre are the team that always joins me. My name is Matt, and guys, we have Don't a lot always, to... Then I'm going to have expectations. Oh, but see, it's the expectations. That's what kills you. We have a lot to talk about, guys. St. Louis made a pretty strong statement over the week. Yeah, that's right. You heard it correct. There's an actual soccer team in St. Louis, and maybe you haven't heard of them yet. The FIFA ratings are out, and we're going to talk about those a little bit and some of the happies and not-so-happies about that. As well, we have plenty of league topics to talk about as Seattle continues to show their muscles and absolutely just bullies LAFC. Dallas takes advantage of a late error from an MLS all-star to get all three points in Kansas City. Colorado flexes their defense and takes out LA Galaxy. And the Columbus crew continue to show why they are the best team in the league. But ladies and gentlemen, we have something we need to talk about prior. And actually, it's something before the alcohol. Today is, if I'm not mistaken, do, 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 today is Monday, September 21st. And I, I don't know, 28 years ago, there was this guy. We all really liked him. His name was Trey. Now, he recently died because Trey shot and killed Dre. So in, in, in respects to Dre, we're, we're wishing Dre a happy birthday. So happy birthday, slut. Cheers, cheers. Thank you, you very fucking. much. Happy birthday, Gang. Trey. I wish Dre was here. You know I really, what the craziest thing was? I literally forgot that I was 28. I'm like, wait, am I turning 29? And then I figured out it's 28, and I'm like, oh, I gained a year. That's kind of cool. No, we're getting here. <laughs> we have to start, like, thinking about how old we are. Like, you have to count in your head every time. Yep. You know? Yeah, I'm yep. like, wait, uh, yep. carry the one. No. But, yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have you done anything fun today, champ? I worked, because that's what 28-year-olds do on their birthdays. And that is the correct answer, because at this point in our lives, we're not allowed to have fun on our birthdays. Yep. So as we go around, we are going to talk about what is in our cup. We're going to go around, and um, actually, I'm going to start with Kyle. Kyle, you have something of the non-alcoholic variety, but I feel like there's a story here. Oh, you know, you see, I'm a fat piece of shit. So I go to Taco Bell just to get Baja Blast all the time. You know they sell it at Sam's Club now, right? It's seasonal. I think the season's over there. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was I was just in Sam's Club and they had it a whole pallet of it, but that's besides. I, I do the point. have a Molson Canadian? Oh. And two. Oh oh ooh the backup in case in case the Baja runs out. Back, Alex- in, back in Toronto playing the same two teams all year long. Alex, what are we drinking? What's in that beautiful rook cup of yours? Oh, it's a sad day. I ran out of Jameson, so I'm just sticking to some uh, good old Chloe white wine that I had laying around in the fridge. But a whole cup of it. Can't go wrong. A whole cup of white wine. Mm-hmm. Sounds, like, sounds like a party. And uh, Dre, wine, Dre, Absolutely it's your birthday. So, Dre, what are you drinking on your birthday? I'm actually on a, on a similar flow to, uh, to Alex. I got myself some wine here as well, so... What I had earlier when I had some uh, some dinner. So oh, we got Cheers. two Han Solos. Uh, hey, hey, red red wine is good for heart health, and that's what I tell myself every night after I have a whole bottle. <laughs> yeah, you just like funnel some like Portuguese Porto wine into your belly. It's that's good for the heart. It's good for the heart. I, I, that's my excuse every night. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm just it's Can heart you health. Substitute a glass of red wine with a bottle of bourbon. Is that <laughs> um, the if same you're thing? If you're south of the Mason-Dixon, I think you can. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't think... uh, And to be fair, I don't think anyone's... Good thing it's 2020 and the Mason-Dixon line starts in Philadelphia for some reason. (laughs) Doesn't it start in, like... It's the southern border of Pennsylvania, so he's not far off. Yeah, I'm just thinking, doesn't it, like, start on, like, South Jersey at this point? Like... It might as well start in fucking Vermont with all the morons around. (sighs) Good old Vermont. Isn't that where maple syrup comes from? That's Canada. Anyway, we digress. Why? Isn't that the same thing? Vermont, Canada, aren't they like, don't they? I, forget that. Canada, I apologize if I'm offending you in any way. In Vermont, I apologize. Get a soccer team so we can go visit you. I want to go to the I, Ben Jerry's factory. Yo, is I'm that where it is? Kyle on yeah. that. Road trip. 
road trip just for ice cream that I can't have. Yes, you can. <laughs> Take like 10 lactate pills. As I enter the state, it's the same thing as Wisconsin. Like if I enter the state of Wisconsin with the amount of cheese that I assume is just in the air, I have to just eat, keep having lactate pills every other hour. Fun fact about Wisconsin, for a landlocked state, their seafood is surprisingly good. And Yes, I- day-old sushi is known for its quality. I don't know why, but like it tasted like quality seafood, and I was really confused. Back to the topic at hand. I am enjoying probably the coolest name beer I've ever heard of in my entire life. Uh, Stone Brewing Company collabed with a coffee company, and they came up with this coffee IPA called Wizards and Gargoyles, and I'm absolutely content with this beer. Thanks, Costco. Sounds like you rolled a net 20 on your beer choice. Wow. Uh, yeah, I also had five additional Three hits. virgins out there just got that joke, Kyle. <laughs> For all three of you, thanks. <laughs> Kyle, I appreciate got the support. So, guys, we had some major topics to talk about this week when it comes to the actual games. But first, there's some big news that came out of the MLS. St. Louis's brand new soccer team. Yes, that's right. If you haven't been following us on social media, maybe you don't know. St. Louis has a soccer team. It will be available. You know, they'll be able to play <clears throat> games in a couple years. You won't be but able overall, to get tickets, though. <laughs> well, see, you say that, but over 50,000 people put down deposits for tickets in just about 24 hours. Now, let me find 50, the thousand in 15 minutes. Whew. Let, let me just take the let me just add this as a note. The deposit only had to be 50 bucks. But the fact that they got 50,000 people to invest $50 into a team that isn't going to be able to play games for a couple years. That's absolutely. Here's, here's my question. That is impressive. Yes. My question is that for single game tickets or is that a, like a deposit for season tickets? Season tickets. tickets. Oh, that's even 50, more impressive. 50,000 people interested Whew. in season tickets. Now, that's like- wait, wait until they go to game one. <laughs> game two, you'll have 20,000. Game three, you'll have 15. And you're lucky by four, you and can fill up Red Bull. And they'll play the Red Bull and they'll all opt in for the next year because they're like, wow, at least we're not those guys. Yeah. But overall, what, what are you guys thinking? Like, what are you guys thinking? This is absolutely, I mean, for me, when I saw this statistic, I was blown away. Like, I didn't know there were 50,000 people in St. Louis. <laughs> I said the same thing when Atlanta United's uh, season ticket count came up, like when they first joined the league. Like, the more people into it, the better it's going to be. The more the league's going to grow. I'm, I'm about it. Uh, so my opinion is that I, I, I give that a nine. That was pretty not, good. Mm, it was good. I, you know, to, to come out of nowhere, you know, it's good. I'm super impressed. I'm like, you know, I agree with Kyle that the more people, the more fans there are of soccer, the more people go out and watch soccer the bigger the MLS will get and, and, you know, in terms of fandom and, and prestige and all that kind of stuff. Now, just a hint to something we're going to chat about more in depth later, but what what's the end game here with Don Garber and the MLS? Like, how many goddamn teams are we going to have at, at one point? Well, we'll discuss that later on, but I, I'm just 42. dumbfounded. Yeah, I'm just dumbfounded that we keep adding and adding and adding teams, and some of these teams aren't even coming from, like, the USL, where there's already an established fan base. They're just coming out of thin air, so... That's kind of a little bit surprising to me, but you got money, um, you can have a team. Yeah. And Dre hit it right on the head. Make sure to check out our social media platforms to look for our brand new fresh pour this week, where we're going to dive deep into that topic of what is Don Garber's end game with all these teams? Are we going to have 80 teams in the league? Are we linking up with Liga MX? You're going to have to check out and that will be available later in the week. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. But guys, it's that time of the year where the leaves are falling off the trees. There's a crisp little breeze, you know, in the air. Oh Some of us it's start basic drinking. white girl spoopy season, isn't it? Some <laughs> of us start to drink pumpkin style beverages, but we're not pointing fingers here. But guys, in my opinion, it's the best time of the year. And no, it's not because Monday night football is back. It's because it is FIFA season, boys and girls, and FIFA is coming back into our lives where we can spend 60 more dollars and give EA all of our money. The MLS rankings have come out for at least the top 10 across all positions, and uh, I'm seeing some names, and then I'm not seeing some names. So I'm going to, you know, I'll hand it off to you guys first before I dive in on mine, but like, who are some of the big surprises on that list 
that like, wow, I can't believe they're on there or I can't believe they're rating. I'm going to, I'm going to start this one off. And naturally, since I, I tend to, you know, value goaltenders very highly, especially when I make like fancy teams and that kind of stuff. I'm a little bit surprised that Kenneth Peter Vermeer Galassi is lower than Stenshna. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Kenneth Vermeer and Bill Hamid being as high as they are, seeing how shit those those two teams are doing right now, and then Tim Melia being as low as he is, and even you know Steve Clark as well. Like those two teams, I mean, I, I don't know how far back they went to get the statistics to make this game, but you know Portland and and some of these other teams, I think their their goaltenders deserve to be higher, whereas Bill Hamid should not be that high, and neither should Kenneth Vermeer from LAFC. So that those kind of shook me to begin with. And Kyle, what what really jumped off the page for you, like surprising wise, when it came to those FIFA rankings? So if I'm sticking to the script because we're an MLS podcast, see, I was looking for Giassi Zardes on the roster, but I only saw Jesse Zardes. Yeah, it's kind of shocking. I don't know what happened because in my mind, he definitely should be a top 10 striker in the league, 13 goals and 28 appearances, and he's currently on the best team in the league. I don't. You could say Rossi is underrated in this game as well. But I also want to go for the obvious. How the fuck are Adam uh, Traore and Cristiano Ronaldo not the highest physical ratings in that game? Have you oh seen my God. those humans? They're Dude, not. Adama Traore's thighs are the size of a tree trunk. I'm pretty sure they just put a dump truck in a Wolves jersey and called it a day. <laughs> oh, my God. But some of the bigger surprises I'm looking at, I mean, if you look at across the board, I'm surprised Matuidi is the highest ranked player in the league, not knowing what he can do in this league. I understand his rating is as high as it was, but he hasn't been at that high quality now for a few years. And you're looking at people like Joseph Martinez, I feel like should have been a little bit higher as Matuidi should have been a few you know, points lower. I feel like I expected that, though, because it's like, oh, those are the two that just came over from Europe. Of course, they're going to be the two highest ranked because, you know, fuck MLS, apparently. But then mm-hmm. I look at, but then I, you, you hear that you say that, and then I look at some of the European names. Nani is only 80 overall. How are certain players in this league rated higher than Nani? Nani, at, since, since he's joined the league, has been one of the more influential players in the league. And I just feel like I've also had my opinions on FIFA where it's a, it's a big cookie cutter system. They basically don't edit the mold too heavy from the year before, but one name. So I'm going to start the snub list. So these are people who I, uh, if you're absolutely pissed on how their ratings came out, how is Andre Blake, not the highest rated goalie in the league, in the game. He is the best goal. He is the best goalie in the league by a country mile. And he is like the fourth or fifth best, best goalie in the league. Other names to bring up who are not even on the top 10 in their listing. Roy Diaz has been a top playing striker in the MLS for years, and he's not even in the top 10. And the you same thing goes with. You just sold me on a copy of PES. And, <laughs> and Miles Ro- Robinson from Atlanta. He's one of the United States' best young American defenders, and he's not even in the top 10 of defenders. This makes no sense to me at all and it's just it, again it's exactly like what you said Kyle like why do you buy FIFA <clears throat> when FIFA just continues to just lay this bullshit out right in front of you and they advertise it like you have so many guys that just made major improvements in their respective leagues and they didn't even go up two points yeah here's here's one other major example of MLS highway robbery Casper Zabilko also not in the top 10 like he's been having an amazing season I, I feel like these ratings come from like before the MLS season kind of starts or gets underway, so that may be why it's skewed. But um, yeah, Jabilica deserves to be on there. Rudia deserves to be on there. There's a lot of a lot of guys that I think were snubbed. Did and Sean Davis you- score above 45? Because I'm calling bullshit if he did. Oh my god. Yeah. I uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm surprised Aaron Long is up there as well. But we'll talk. I'm about surprised that. there's a Red Bull player in the fucking anywhere near that list. I'm upset it's not Kyle Duncan because Kyle Duncan's been the best player on the Red Bull this year. Absolutely. But guys, we have gameplay to talk about. So time to put down those controllers and get the hell out of your mom's basement because we are now talking about some MLS action. And guys, Seattle, since the restart, has been basically anything but perfect. 
they are absolutely incredibly just taking apart every single last team they're playing. And unfortunately, LAFC was the uh, <laughs> the next game on their list. And, and Kyle, I'll start this off with you. Is Seattle just completely dominating the league and that's it? It's over? Or did LA, is this just, you know, LAFC continuing to just be on their poor roar, uh, run of form? I'm not saying Seattle's not dominating the league, but all I know is that if everybody got to play LAFC as much as Seattle has, yikes. <laughs> it's it's that the chant has never been more uh, true that can we play you every week, but like who thought you'd be saying that to Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> or sorry, to, to LA, I mean. Everybody's saying that except the Canadian teams. Yeah. No, this oh, was Canada. another game where LAFC's back for pretty much highlighted everything that's wrong with that team yet again. I don't think me and Matt have broken that down enough over the last few. It's kind of more of the same. The one thing I do question, like, we know LAFC's defense is not good, right? How do you give up two penalties in four minutes to a team that has Lodiero as their PK taker of all fucking people? And you saw, like, you saw Latif Blessing tackle that guy. Like, for that second yeah. penalty, Latif Blessing straight NFL-style tackled <laughs> him in the box. Why would you, you give s- a PK to the guy that's 14 for 14 in the regular season? Let like, alone two. I, I just, like, and you're even seeing it in the Premier League this last week. You're just seeing defenders, like, take their arms, wrap around a defender, and just drag them to a gra- the, uh, ground, drag them to the ground in the box. Like, like they like they don't know VARs around. Like they don't know there's thirteen thousand cameras and Twitter and replays League, and everything. Didn't Premier League switch to uh, Bellator rules? <laughs> oh, that's that is true. I mean, basically, Harry Maguire took out a piece of uh, a Chelsea striker's leg last year, and it was a no call. So got up, no, you got... around and yelled, "Who the fuck is that guy?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, uh, to to wrap up the Seattle LFC conversation, I mean. Listen, Seattle's been on a bender since the the tournament's been over. The only loss they've had, I think, since the tournament ended was against the tournament winners, Portland. Other than that, they've had a tie and victories all the way since. And they're not afraid to put up, you know, a bunch of goals per game, too. So um, Seattle's in this sweet spot. They're just they're like peak midseason form, firing on all cylinders, rolling with it. And LAFC just can't seem to get their feet under them. I feel like. Right now, especially when it comes to uh, BWP, he hasn't played a full game in a long time. And I think they're starting to realize what the Red Bull realized. And that's that he, he can't, you can't put a lot of minutes on him and expect him to perform all the time. You could give him 20, 30 minutes, but you can't give him 60 or 70. And, you know, maybe his age is starting to show. And maybe this is kind of the, the BWP that Red Bull fans were, like, ready to say goodbye to and that LAFC fans... You know, when they had him scoring goals in the tournament earlier on, he was kind of overperforming, and this is kind of more of his normal form, I guess. Uh, But, yeah, clearly they're definitely missing Carlos Vela. And you guys both hit it right on the head. I mean, I'll I'll drive into a few points, but you guys basically hit it right. And Kyle even said it right as he started. I don't think we can talk about enough times how LAFC's defense is literally the thing that's absolutely killing this team. But it's not just their defense, it's their set-piece play as well. When teams have the ability of getting a free kick in a good position against these guys, it's if you're an LAFC fan, you're sweating bullets because not only has your defense been piss poor, your man marking has been piss poor, and your goaltending hasn't been good either. You think about it. We were just talking about those FIFA rankings. The best goalie in the MLS plays for one of the worst teams defensively in the league. And then you look at Seattle. Seattle only having 40% possession, but beating... LAFC in big chances created, shots on target, and overall chances. It, it, Seattle is finding a way, whether they have the ball or don't have the ball, to do something with it and get the get those goals. I'm just going to keep screaming it at the microphone until, you know, eventually the mic kicks out. Roy Diaz is the MVP of this league. Roy Diaz can go on autopilot for the rest of the season, and he will win MVP. Are you and no one the guy that's not top ten in FIFA is the MVP of the league. I'm not understanding. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's like those guys at FIFA really got it down pat. But yeah, 
This guy cannot stop scoring. Guys, in eight games, he has seven goals and two assists. What else do you want from a true number nine? And the fact that he's teaming up with Jordan Morris so well in these games, Seattle have a beautiful opportunity to absolutely run away with this league. And if it wasn't for Columbus having an absolutely incredible season, I think Seattle really would be walking away with it. Now to continue on to the Western Conference, we have Dallas beating Kansas City in a very late thriller that involved an a former MVP candidate and an MLS All-Star basically handing the game over. I mean, we started with Kyle, so Dre, I'll have you start this one. What did, what did you think? Dallas? I mean, they, they give us little bits and pieces like they want to be a competitor. Mm -hmm. So this is, I'm glad that we chose this game to talk about because we haven't really talked about Dallas in a while. We did mention Seattle earlier in the season and, and not Seattle, uh, Sporting KC during the tournament and whatnot because we had, I had high hopes for them at least. But this game kind of showed that Dallas, their, their game plan is to make the best, or, or at least this game particularly, they made the best of the chances they were given or the chances they made for themselves without necessarily controlling the flow of the game, controlling the possession, having the most shots, having the most shots on target. They were kind of losing in all those statistical categories, you know, shot completion, pack, uh, pass completion, all those categories, and yet managed to put in three goals and you know, none of them were, you know, penalties. Like they, they straight up from open play scored three goals when they had the minority of the possession and all that. So that that's definitely impressive from Dallas. Um, you know, they're they're definitely trying harder than uh, than a lot of other teams right now, and it shows because Casey and and Melia is not an easy goalie to defeat. So that was an impressive performance from Dallas for sure. And Kyle, overall, you're looking at it. Kansas City. I mean, they struggled in this game, even though the score line was tight. I think that Kansas City does great jobs of showing us flashes throughout their games of they can get it done without Alan Polito, but they need to stop playing sloppy and shooting themselves in the foot. Dallas is looking alive. They're by no means one of the like the best team in the league, but they with nine goals in September, they're definitely finding their footing. But just I thought it was a great game up until, you know, the very end when you watch Hollingshead go to pass back to the goalie and just not even close error leading directly to a goal. You can't make mistakes like that, let alone in the 86th minute. No, and you, again, I, I love the fact that I follow up you guys because you guys basically knock all the points so I don't have to talk for a while. <laughs> but really, when you think about it, Everything comes down to two things. One, Johnny Russell needs to be in the MVP conversation because Johnny Russell is Kansas City's offense. Johnny Russell is bearing the load, whether it is set pieces or from open play. Johnny Russell is doing it all. But like Dre said, Dallas did an absolutely incredible job controlling this game, especially in Kansas City, which is not an easy place to play. But the major talking point, Graham Zuzi, what are you doing it is in the dying minutes of the game and you kick a weak pass back to your goalie while the opposing team is pressing are you kidding me you're an all-star you're one of the best defenders in this league you need to know better and you would think some of your veteran experience would make a little bit of a difference here we're all granted mistakes and no one is perfect but Graham Zuzi I expected a little bit better I really thought while watching this game, we're going to see a draw out. But all credit to Dallas. That's three important road points. And Dallas continues to show that they're a team that should be somewhat to be a force of. Yeah. And one last point on this game. I do remember either last week or the week before, we were talking about Graham Zuzi, and we were kind of impressed with his performance because at that game, he actually played up as more of a forward uh, attacking player, had a good performance, and now... He comes back to, I guess, more of his natural position and gets uh, gets an error in there. So that was kind of shitty of him. Maybe um, and the one him where he was last game, possible. Well, no. you have to remember, Graham Zuzi started his career up front. He only yeah. in his past in the past few years transitioned into that wing back position. But guys, we had fans in the stands, and I get it. It's starting to trickle over to other cities. You've seen it in some of the Texas State teams. What, what what are we thinking about the 
singled out amount of fans that are coming into games. What are, what are your guys' opinions on that? I personally, I get that there's money that the MLS wants to make. There's no way they're breaking even just from spending from team to team just on their TV contract. It's kind of dumb to think that. And as as long as guidelines are followed for every local local uh, the, the local police guidelines, local government guidelines, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't have fans. As long as it's safe and everything like that. We all want to get back to normal, but let's just remember that we're kind of tipping our toe in the water and like getting a little bit of a nice thing. Just don't ruin it. Andre, you got any opinions on this, or do you think Kyle really hit that on the head? He, he's got all the good points there. Um, all I would add is to the fans that are going out there, like please actually respect and take these rules seriously. Don't go out there and put your mask below your nose. Don't go out there and take your mask off and start chanting or cheering or jeering or this or that. Stay a couple seats away, wear your mask, and enjoy the game. I'm not saying go full, you know, uh, the Japanese league where the fans are literally sitting, hands crossed quietly for 90 minutes. But I'm also not saying, you know, go out there and sing for the full 90 because that would be the stupidest thing to do. Uh, respect people's social distance and space and wear a mask and don't be stupid so you don't ruin it for the rest of us. Did no, you have any I'm- other COVID uh, hygiene tips for everybody going to games? Yes, wash your ass. Thank you. I was waiting for it. I was really waiting for it. And he I would sets have been, them up, and I and I would I would real I would have been out. so upset if Dre was actually going down like a hard list of things to do. <laughs> I would have been really upset, and I'm glad that he got that so quickly. But Kyle's got it right here. It's all about that money, and some of these clubs need that financial dollar coming through the front door. They need people buying merchandise. They need stuff being bought at the concession stands. And you know what? Hopefully this is a push for the rest of the league where, you know what, we're going to be able to get there. It's a one day thing and we're slowly going to start to get there. Unfortunately with us being in the metropolitan area, I feel like we are going to be one of the last of the teams to, uh, you know, at least open their doors to the fan base. I think there's going to be more teams across the United States that are going to have that opportunity before us going in. Back to the West Coast, we are going with Colorado going on and taking on the Los Angeles Galaxy in an impressive, in a very impressive game for Colorado. Colorado's defense really showed up and really, I mean, that back line was absolutely phenomenal. Dre, really, I mean, uh, what is going on with the Los Angeles Galaxy? One week, they're taking on opponents and they're scoring four or five goals a game, and then they turn around and they play a Colorado team, and they absolutely just don't show up. Yeah, that this is definitely the most shocking game for me, at least in, in recent history. You know, we've been here week in, week out, week in, week out, talking about how impressive this LAFC side is. Even without Chicharito, the super sub, they've been performing. They've been beating... LAFC, who's their arch rival over and over, and just putting up really impressive performances. I think, you know, they 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 were undefeated for like a five or six game run. So for me, the most shocking thing is that Colorado is the team to to put them down. Um, I mean, they did get a red card, and the, the second goal came right after that. So I feel like that was kind of the final nail in the coffin. But yeah, LA done messed up here. And I, like I said, I'm still just shocked that it was Colorado that, that did him in. And Kyle, anything to add on to that? The only thing I'd really add is uh, we all talk about in our personal lives, in the podcast, on the Fresh Poor, what have you, um, the New York Red Bull and the homegrown system clearly failing. Well, Colorado is a case of exactly the opposite. Sam Vines and Cole Bassett leading this team with an average age of not even 25 from a 4-1 loss last week to beating the LA Galaxy this week. It's just everything about the homegrown system working. No, I mean, like, I'm just going to just copy and paste my response from the last one. I just like going after you guys because you guys hit all (laughs) the major points and I just sit here and look pretty. But Colorado owned this game from top to bottom, owning 55% of the possession and basically... 
taking control of all total shots, chances created, big chances. But let's be honest, L.A. really never bounced back after that red card. And my real big takeaway from all this is Colorado's back line and goaltending. Absolutely. You saw some of the saves that Yarborough had to make in this game. He deserves all the credit, and that back line stood on their head and did an absolutely incredible job. If you're following Fop Mob, which is an app that all of us use heavily on this podcast, make sure the schedule's Fop, right. Fop Mob completely rated every single one of the defenders and goalie above seven out of ten. And I'm telling you right now, when you're back four and your goalkeeper are you know seven out of ten or better. <laughs> more than likely you're going to have a very good game. So my hat's off to you, Colorado. I'm hoping that, you know, more success your way. And for the Los Angeles Galaxy, you got to figure out what you're doing with Chicharito. you got to figure out what kind of system you're doing. And it's just a little annoying that it almost seems like every other game they're doing something different. And you need that consistent lineup and you need that consistent chem- chemistry to brew success. And I, I just feel like, they really got to figure out what they're doing. I'm not going to, you know, I'm hoping to see something better from the Los Angeles Galaxy because you expect something better, but only time will tell. Speaking of time, it's about time we start talking about how the Columbus crew are the best team in MLS and once again showing the rest of the East that even the newcomer Nashville has no chance or no opportunity. Nashville, again, on the back of a wonderful performance. Kyle, you've been preaching Columbus since day one, so I'm going to start this off with you. Can Columbus keep doing what they're doing? I think that's the question, because I think when you're talking about a team that has conceded four goals in their last 12 games, they are literally second in MLS history only to the 2010 LA Galaxy which conceded its fourth goal in their 13th game. If they can go one more game without a goal, they got it. That's this nuts. Isn't, this, isn't ever, this isn't to see, like, oh, can anybody catch the crew? This is, can the crew not fuck up? This is their race to lose, and I think they can do it because you have key pieces that weren't there last year, Zella Rayan. You have an on-fire Jossie Zardes. He changed his name. He filed that form. (laughs) It's not Jesse anymore. He's nailing it. They're just firing on all cylinders. And, Dre, do you have have any points to take away from the Nashville side? Like, Nashville did play a decent game against these guys and only really lost it towards the end. The only point that matters is Alex Wheel, is it not? (laughs) Yeah, no, I was going to say, one of my favorite points from... Um, like a, a photo that came out after this game was the uh, jersey swap. You had uh, Alex Muel and Ed, uh, NTN Jr. swap jerseys, and I'm like, why are they wearing yellow jerseys? But it, it, it was cool to see. A smile to your face. Like, oh, wow, yeah. they're getting started and respected. Wow, yeah, it's, thought. Yeah, seeing, seeing the two ex-Red Bull uh, players, you know, kind of reunite on two different teams um, and, you know, play against each other. That was interesting. Yeah, no, Nashville, um, This I feel like this is kind of showing their... I guess youth and inexperience in the league. Not that Columbus has that much more, uh, but Nashville is still like brand spanking new. And, you know, you, it's hard to compete with the quality of Gyasi Zardes when he's a top, you know, player in the MLS. He's uh, one of the best players on the US MNT and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's tough to um, compete against that, you know, even though Nashville controlled the possession and, you know, all those kinds of things, they really couldn't get the job done, and then, you know, Zardes with a 90th minute goal, that kind of demoralizes everyone, really. And, and let, me you bo- add, let me just add one more thing. By all means. Um, so my, my, my guess is that Columbus will not falter, and they're going to keep going at this rate. And if you look at the way this game was played, they started two relatively young guys for two of their stars, Darlington Nagby and Lucas Zellerayon, who are not in the game. They have the depth that manages to not miss not only some of the best two players on your team, but some of the best two players in the league, and it didn't even look like they missed them. That's depth. And you look at some of the more impressive teams across Europe. I mean, you look at a Bayern Munich, a Liverpool, you know, you look at these teams that have, you know, their bench could start in their league and have success, and you need to have that depth. To, again, it's a long season. It's a very long season between 
MLS, MLS Cup, and the U.S. Open Cup, there's a lot of soccer to be played, and you need that depth. To go into it, Santos and Zardes, in my opinion, are the best two-striker system in the MLS. They both complement each other very, very much. And even though Columbus doesn't need the possession, having the abilities that Santos and Zardes have are amazing for the counterattack. And I know Dre is a huge, huge supporter of the two-striker system and would love to see a little bit more of it. Columbus knocks it out of the park completely to flip it. Nashville impressed me very much in this game. For being a newcomer team, they seem to have a really good structure going on. They seems to be a strict game plan, and everyone seems to know their role. Compliments to Alex Wheel. He found his way right into this starting lineup, and he has a huge impact on this team. He had two massive chances in this game, and you know what? He's doing absolutely everything he can, and Dax McCarty being the captain of this team, he's doing an absolutely wonderful job. Nashville, not this year, maybe not next year, but the year after that, I could easily see this team getting into the playoffs and causing some havoc, and it all leads from Zimmerman in the back. That is the piece, and I keep saying it every week, that's the piece that LAFC is missing. Having Zimmerman on that back line for Nashville is everything for them. Having a leader back there is exactly what a brand new team needs, and I'm glad he's in Nashville. You you, you see posts from the fans and the supporters groups. He's worshipped like a god, as he should be. But to I go like back to— he was confident enough to really not know how much they'd miss him when they got rid of him. Uh, unfortunately, when you— your poster child of Carlos Vea, you know, that that's what happens when you have a superstar up front. You you bank on them scoring a goal or two or getting an assist or two every single game. But now you have a situation where he's injured. You don't know what, you know, you don't know where the production is going to come from. But you look at it, Columbus, they controlled the important parts of this game. When it came down to crunch time, Columbus did an absolutely incredible job. And that's why I'm doing an early shout right now. If we can get to an MLS cup, because you know, the schedule only comes out every other week and we only find out like what's going to happen every two weeks in advance. Early prediction. I think Columbus will have enough to get to an MLS cup final where they will face the Seattle Sounders. And I think that is going to be one hell of an MLS final. And they very well could be uh, reigning supporter shield champions by the time we see. (laughs) Good God. I'm telling you right now, uh, there's way more soccer left to go on this year. I think we're, I, you know what? The cases have been low. Knock on wood. I'm hoping we can get through the rest of this season. I'm a little upset that they only released the schedule in spurts, but Hey, I think, you know, we got to take what we can get, and I'm happy about it. Something else I'm extremely happy about is I'm going to find out what's going on with Freddie Adu because I'm sorry. I'm pulling up to the parking lot. It's a little gravel lot because, you know, it's not an established place. But I'm I'm walking up to the farmer's market. Dre, what are you giving me today on the farmer's market minute? So this one, this one's going to hit you a little close to home here. So this week on the farmer's market minute – we continue our journey of following Freddie Adu through his travels across the world. Now, he's already played for some big-name teams, so these next couple teams, you're not going to know where the fuck they're from because I didn't know where the fuck they were from until I looked them up. saying something. Right. So, last we left off, he was playing for Benfica on loan to Monaco, did fuck all at Monaco, returns to Benfica. Benfica loans him out to another Portuguese team, still in the first tier, called Belenessas CFO. Plays for them three times between August and December, even though he's on a full year-long loan. Plays three times, zero goals, zero assists. Continues his fuck allness that he's been doing. And this team was so bad that they ended his contract early. They ended Freddie Dew's contract early in December. And at this point, he was like kind of a free agent. He was bought out by a team in Greece in the Greek, was it Super League, whatever the hell you guys call it out over there in Greece, the Greek uh, First League, uh, by a team called Eris. And he signed a one-year contract with them starting in January and going for a full calendar year from there. And in the, the half season he finished there, he got one goal and one assist. So 
Now we realize it took him going all the way to the Greek League to finally get a goal and an assist back. And even there, he was only able to get a starting shout in two games out of, you know, half the season. So was it 12 games or whatever? How many so, times do you think he prayed to John Stamos to even get that? My God, he was, he was probably blowing some guys, you know, somewhere in the back to even get those those spots. Yeah, your your heart just breaks for this guy. Like, you have to understand the hype that was coming yeah. out for this guy. And it, I'm not doing this to, like, shit on the kid. This is, this literally, this journey we're going on is the textbook example of why you don't put the world of pressure on Gio Reyna or the world of pressure on, at the time, a Neymar or Mbappe or the world of pressure on, you know, a Kai Havertz right now. You throw that on these kids, and then when they don't live up to all this hype and pressure, that's when you're going to end up, you know, not believing in yourself, underperforming, and, you know, ending up in God knows where. Speaking of under pressure, disappointing, and basically everything my doctor tells me every time I go to the uh, get my checkup, guys, we lead to our final segment, which is what is pissing you off this week? What a segue. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. 11. Again? Hold on. So, hold on. Before, before, we go on. before we continue, before we continue, before we continue, okay, Alex, look at me through Skype. We're going to go through the numbers that exist between 1 and 10. Okay, ready? 1, 2, mm-hmm. 3, 4, mm-hmm. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait, now, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me Matt, get my pick real Matt, quick. Matt, you, lo- you lost me after 2. Okay. Um. Gosh darn it. What did guess, you learn at college? I don't oh, guess had a blue, binge drink. I had a cure a hangover. Uh, a lot of very fun recreational activities. <laughs> you know what? Kyle, go first. Kyle, what's pissing you off? I guess Q. Was Q the right number? Q was mm-hmm. the right number. Q was the... A- I was, I was going to say pie. Perfect. Perfect. That's a so dumb guy. What's Sorry. pissing me off today is... um. Constantly hearing how busy and behind we are at work to then I sit there and I spend literally six hours, I'm not lying to you, six hours breaking concrete off of ten poles. Oh, God. So I'll terrible. be there. I'll be were, were you, I'll be there were you on, a, on a prison gang or are you at Basically, work? Basically, <laughs> a little of both. So then, you know, like 2.30 rolls around. Oh, I have this job for you to go to. Really, dude? <laughs> no, sorry, I'm busy breaking concrete. Now? After my thumb has been planted right in my ass for the last four <laughs> hours? Usually you gotta pay extra for that, Cod. <laughs> Alright, dude. The worst part is, I think he just fell asleep and didn't want to admit it. Because he's like, oh, I'll be right there. Just break the concrete until I be there. I'll be right there. And then he just showed up and acted like nothing's happened. It's not like he gave me 50 more things to do in this time. He just said do one thing and I'll be right there. And then... Six hours later, strolls in. So we're going to go with work. Work is what's pissing off Kyle this week. <laughs> Alex, what's pissing you off this week? Uh, it's something that I've, I've, I'm actually like pretty sure I'm just not going to get my money anymore, but it's the IRS and this whole mix up with my address and my oh, stimulus and stimulus? tax return. No, I haven't got well, my you tax need, return you need on. You need uh. your tax return. Like the IRS is going to come knocking on your door, bro. So yeah, I haven't got my tax return or my stimulus check. I emailed the accountant again. He gave me a number to call. That number said the same thing. The website said that it can't give me any, they don't have information at this time. So, this so I don't know who's at, I don't know who's at fault. I don't know what to do at this point. I'm, I just kind of give up. So are you so, telling me this went from he was going to get you an answer into here's a number? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just <sighs> so if Alex doesn't show up on a the podcast, the fire just gets higher and higher every. Yeah, I just I just want my money, man. <laughs> so if Alex doesn't show up on the pod one day, we're just assuming that the IRS came knocking on your door and <laughs> they tax uh, man the ta- the good old. Yeah, like, where is this? And I'm just gonna pick a fight with him and just. Yeah, they're going to drag me out. He's living in a shack somewhere with Freddie Adu, so nobody recognizes him. Sir, have you filed your taxes? I would if you would give me the damn piece of paper. (laughs) I haven't gotten my taxes in four years. 
They keep taking money, but they won't give me any back. Give it back. Give it back. So, Dre, it is your birthday. So are you are you really pissed off or what's going on? I'm pretty happy. Listen, it's a good day. I had a good weekend. I'm kind of pissed off that like every year my birthday signals like the end of summer because it literally is the last day of the summer. So it's kind of cool, but it's also like, damn, summer's over. So like back when you were in school, it's like, all right, well, now it's now like you're getting to school mode because school's over and because summer's over. And yeah, just generally six months because of you. (laughs) But no, um, other than that, you know, I I, uh, I'm doing pretty good right now. He's just okay. not allowed to say that he's not drunk and he's doing this with us instead of being drunk. So that's his answer. Oh, he's sticking oh. to it. Amen to that. What's pissing me off this week is a pretty easy fucking answer. And it's the fact that I allow myself to spend two hours a week watching Manchester United attempt to play soccer. I'm not diving into it. I Are really don't want to talk anymore? about it. Are they still doing I, that? I, do, I don't even know it's an attempting. But you know what? really makes me happy at the end of the day is the fact that alcohol? you know not just alcohol yeah he took a sweet bro trip to a vineyard this weekend and i get no i know that sounds like the way it does but we had a sick time drinking wine together yeah, and the that's Star what this weekend was pretty okay it was it was so the Han Solo convention so Han at the winery. <laughs> so many Han Solos. Yo, my favorite is just watching girls in like ten inch stiletto heels walking up a dirt mountain, and they're like all breaking. I, 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 I not bring Alexa into this. She's very nice. Yeah, I didn't understand. <laughs> that's why. That's why she got. She's like, why do you keep leaving me behind? I'm like. <laughs> what do you mean you're walking Dude, the grandma with like, the walkers leaving you behind yeah i'm like lady i want i want to drink today <laughs> yo shout out to the guy wasn't even an employee there we there we so we had to wait in a long line to get in but there was a guy who wasn't even he was not even an employee who just walked up to the line and just said hey guys by the way it's an hour and 30 minute wait half of the line left and then we came to conclusion like Oh, wait, we haven't seen that guy since. Oh, that guy wasn't even an employee. He just just straight lied to people to get them to get out of line. <laughs> and yeah, half yeah. the line went away. What a our, our original wait was Doing probably... Doing God's work. Doing oh, God's dude, work. Our wait was probably originally an hour. We got in in 20 minutes. It was great. I just... Nice. Oh, dude, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And on that perfect note, Ladies and gentlemen, this is another wonderful episode of Post and Pints. Remember to find us on all of our social media platforms. That is Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We are on Patreon now. Let's not forget that. Very exclusive stuff. As well, we recently just created a Discord. Yes, that's right. Right now, for free, no payment whatsoever, you can join our Discord group where you can have a conversation with us and about, at this point, we have about like 10 or 15 people in there who are talking all MLS, anything funny. We have like a, we have a group Make chat. fun of Matt. Oh, oh yeah, there is literally a separate group chat strictly making fun of my mustache. You're going to want to get in on this. It's hot shit. It's hot. This is stuff you're going to want to get oh, on. Yeah. So, guys, for myself, Kyle, Alex, Dre, uh, hey, guys, say bye to the pretty people. I hate you you actually have to say bye if they're listening on the podcast. Bye. Yeah. Okay, Nikki. they can't see. They Please can't talk hear to you. us. We're so lonely. This has been another episode of Posts and Pints. Remember to follow us at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And new news, we are now on Patreon. If you like the show and you want to support, please become a patron. Until next week, cheers.